Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to show you all how I'm going to make a sun catcher out of this very pretty sparkly um, glass diamond, like diamond cut piece of like glass or crystal, like it casts rainbows when the sun goes through it so it's super pretty. Um, I'm going to be wrapping it in half Persian 3-in-1 chain mail, which this is a finished example um, but what we're going to be doing is just, like, this is actually a bracelet, but I wanted to be able to test the length to see how much I would need to go around the sides there. Um, and then I'm actually going to be wire wrapping it in, in a fractal wrap pattern, which I have an example of a thought. Here it is. This is one that I've done in a different tutorial, um, where I'm using a gear to wrap it on, but I wanted to do a detailed tutorial showing y'all how to do this same wrap whenever you you have a, uh, a chain mail base for it to go around. So I'm actually just going to bring the camera right on down so that you guys can get a much better view of what we're doing. And to start this weave off, also the rings that I'm using here are um, 16 gauge 1 fourth inch internal diameter. I get them from the ringlord.com and I'm using a little bit of a rainbow pattern here um, just to be able to more clearly demonstrate to you guys. Um, instead of just saying we'll put this ring through that ring, I'll be able to say put the red ring through the other ring <laughs> or yeah, something. So we're going to take this one open with two closed on it and close it. Um, now also Feel free to do whatever kind of color pattern inlay that you like, um, but you're going to take your three rings and you want this one to slide in right behind the left ring. And see that little eye, that little, if this were a Venn diagram there's where those two rings overlap, we're going to take an orange ring. Also, for reference sake, I set up 29 units, which is one open with one closed on it. Um, but you can, you know, if you have a bigger or a larger stone, uh, you know, shorten or extend it as you see fit. So I'm going to take this orange ring and I'm going to thread through. See how those guys are laying like that? And this is pretty hard. to. This first part can be difficult. But we're going to hook through just those two red not this one here, just those two in the front. And then we're going to close it. Now, I'll have a list of tools and materials down in the video description um, for <clears throat> pliers that I recommend and places to get rings and things like that. And so we're going to take the orange one and we're going to tuck it behind that red one. Because see how this is kind of stacking that rings under that ring under that ring? Like, we want that pattern to keep happening. This is how it's coming along so far. And this can be a really difficult weave for some folks. So, um, that's why this is, I think, my third tutorial. Um, so now the next ring, um, I'm going to be hooking through this red one. And then through the orange. And then just let it hang. And see, it sometimes you're lucky and it'll hold its shape. Other times, it's just an explosive mess, it seems. Um, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So we're going to take it like that, and we're just going to hook that one, boop, right behind it, like so. And I'm actually going to set this down for a minute because I did not finish prepping my rings. So just to go over some quick chain mill form, whenever you open a ring, you don't really, you like, you only need it like that much. You don't want to open the ring this way, pulling the ends apart from each other, because it's going to make a little brittle spot right here on the ring. Um, and you don't really need it open much more than this, but if you open it less, you're going to have a hard time hooking it through and weaving. And then to close the ring, if you just move it, you can see there's still that little bit of a gap right there, enough that I can actually fit my fingernail through it. Um, that comes from whenever the rings are cut, uh, you know, the saw blade removes some of the material. So I actually kind of wiggle back and forth and I'm pushing inward with my pliers the whole time. So there's that. 
and then I'm just going to set that ring on there. And then you do that like a million more times. Um, that's something that Chainmail definitely does give you an opportunity to practice good technique and good form. Now these rings that I'm using here are anodized aluminum. So I wouldn't recommend tumbling your anodized aluminum like in a rotary or vibratory tumbler with stainless steel shot because that will remove the, um, the pretty color that's on there. I also did not have enough of all of the different colors to do a solid repetition of all of them. So that's why there's more of some colors than there are of others. But you could do this weave out of copper, out of stainless steel, out of niobium or titanium. You know, it's the, the possibilities really are endless. Okay, so I'm going to be attaching on my last repetition of the orange. So I'm going to hook through those two. See how it kind of just slides in right through there? Then I'm going to let it hang and I'm going to close it. And so now I'm going to take this orange that's kind of dangling off the end and I'm going to tuck it behind the other one. Now also, if you're having difficulty with this weave, please go and check out, there's a lot of really good um, tutorials here on YouTube. Maleartisans.org has a lot of very good um, photograph and CG tutorials. And I'm just going to kind of keep weaving. We can weave along together and hang out for a minute. Or you can skip ahead in the video to get to where we're joining the ends. I like to hear that click that lets me know I'm getting a good solid closure. Now also, this weave was probably one of the hardest weaves um, for me personally to learn, um, especially closing it was super difficult. But I think part of that was um, this was one of the first weaves that I learned. Um, you know, the more you practice chain mail, the better you'll get at pattern recognition, at, um, you know, just kind of being able to get a feel for how to hold your pliers, how to insert rings at the angle that you're shooting for. Um, and something that's nice about this weave, though, is once you get the hang of this ring goes here, um you just repeat that same step like a bunch more times <laughs> like so many more times so yeah we just find where those two rings overlap hook through close and then tuck behind Just trying to get a nice solid closure. Y'all can probably hear my dryer and washing machine going in the background. <laughs> it is laundry day. And I, I like using this weave not just for setting um, bobbles and things. Because you can see this little trough that it makes. How right down the center here it can kind of cup around things. Um, that's something that I feel like is pretty unique to this pattern and comes in really handy for um, setting cabochons or stones, anything that's undrilled that you just want it hugging around the edge. This is a really great, great weave to use um, w whenever you're wrapping a coin or something. Um, but also I like it because as a bracelet, it sits very flat on your skin, but has a nice rounded rope edge, so you can reverse it and get two different looks. Um, but I work on a computer quite a bit throughout the day doing video editing and different things like that. Um, so having something that's not huge and bulky that gets between my wrist and the table uh, comes in very handy. Also, some of the rings that I'm using are machine cut and some of them are saw cut. And I'll show you the difference here in a moment. And it's the reason why I use both in some of my work is because this is the navy blue in machine cut and this is the navy blue 
in saw cut and I'm going to add one more so that you can see a little bit more of the contrast there but um typically I use exclusively saw cut because I really like like you can see here if the camera will focus yeah maybe I can just zoom in this way yeah so you can see here the closures on the saw cut it's nice and smooth there's no you know gap there on the side as compared to this is the machine cut and no matter how well I close the machine cut rings and what it means by machine cut is it's like they either used a press or wire snips but you can really see there how the machine imprinted there's a bit of a pinch on the end of this ring and you can see it here on this one too and it's like so no matter how much I try to close it there's still going to be a little bit of something there and so it's just not as you know so this is a good side by side saw cut machine cut and then also sometimes you can take your ring and just smush it down but that's that just happens um, so I, I feel like the, um, the saw cut is higher quality. Um, it just, it makes for a silkier chain mail, but I'm willing to compromise that on a few rings to get a more gradual color variation. And then also my camera's just not doing a very good job at picking up on the colors either. So not as, at least not the way that my eyeball sees them. Okay, so we're coming a little bit closer to the end now. And we're just adding a few more rings. I hear you, puppy. I also um, purchase, I try to purchase some of my rings from multiple manufacturers as well because the way that Blue Buddha boutique anodizes their rings they come out with some different color schemes that um the ring lord sometimes doesn't have you know so okay so now i am going to test the distance around our crystal here make sure Eep. it's a good size let me see if i can get this camera to come up just a little bit And it's not. We need to add, let me add in this last section. We might need to do a third repetition of the hot pink. Closing that together. Yeah, I'm going to need one more <laughs> ring in there, I think. Let me pull out my tray of rings. I'm actually going to pull out three rings. And this is something I've had folks ask me, oh, well, how do you know how many, um, you know, uh, rings to use for a, a bracelet or for a cobblestone setting or, and, um, trial and error that's the biggest thing is I mean I go through so much and add and take away rings um so the last the last ring um will not have one closed on it and I'll show you why here in a moment so I'm just gonna hook on one more ring one open one closed so I guess this brings us up to 31 units then to go around so now on this last one, and I'm going to zoom in on this so that y'all can really hopefully see what's going on. Um, we're going to hook the pink through these two like that. And then I'm following the chain around. You don't want any twists or anything in it to the red. And then I'm going to hook through right there. So we're coming in behind the red ring 
and I'm going to close. And you can see that's not quite joined correctly, not yet in any case. So we want to make sure that this red ring goes in front of the pink ring because that's how the pattern sets. And now this bottom pink ring needs to be sitting and going through this red ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this pink ring. And I'm going to bring this red ring around. And I'm just trying to hook it. And this part can be super tricky, you guys, but I just want to hook it right through there. And it's very important that you don't hook through any other rings. But that's how it comes together. So I hope that color contrast is helpful to you guys. Okay, so now I'm going to take this moment of truth, see if it fits, and it does. If it's mm, a little loosely, like you can take it, and this is why some folks will be like, oh, we'll just make it super tight, but if you make it super tight, it's going to put tension on the rings, and on something as soft as aluminum, it can actually pull the rings apart, but you want it tighter than this because it just knocks off. Um... But to be able, so sometimes, you know, you could leave it like this and just go through with some E6000 or two-part epoxy along the back and then let it rest on its front. And that'll kind of, as it dries, it'll kind of settle in there and it'll hold it in. But I prefer really durable stuff. Gosh, I really like that. Okay, so let me dig out. I think we're going to be using maybe a 24 gauge silver para wire. Yeah, and this is silver plated silver. So it's a copper core that's been plated in silver and then covered in a silver enamel. So it's non-tarnish, um, which is really nice. And I'm going to pull myself off a full, like two arm stands. Yeah, because this can, this can burn through some wire pretty quickly. Um, that's why I don't typically do this weave in or uh, this wrap in sterling or fine silver. Um, can I help you, Belgi? <laughs> so you we're gonna start by just picking a random spot on the uh, bezel that we've made for our stone. And I'm just going to insert the wire through by about an inch or so. And I'm going to pin this down with my finger because we'll come through and tuck it in later. And I'm finding the end of my wire. And I'm going to come over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots. And you could do more or less, just depending. Um, the farther apart you make the holes, and as you pull it down, you want to make sure that you don't put any kinks into it. But you can see this just hugs that little bit across the edge. So if I wanted to cover up more of the stone, I would come further and do much longer wraps. If I wanted to cover up less of the stone, I'd have gone a few spots back. And so now it's kind of cumbersome here at the start. But I'm just going to... Find the end of my wire and I just thread it through as if it were a needle. And so I came through this one first, so now I'm coming through the holes here on the side. And I'm just going to pull on through. I'm trying really hard to not get snagged on anything. Don't entice the cat too much. <laughs> Oops. And sometimes your stone will slip off or your bezel will slip off of your stone. That's normal. It happens. Just fight with it. And I'm finding the end of my wire again. Coming through the next hole. And you really do just kind of repeat this. Um, all the way around. And I wanted to do this tutorial in real time to give you guys a good idea. Ah, see it keeps on slipping. 
and you you could use a spot of glue just to hold it stable um while you do the wrapping there. come on <laughs> um but uh nobody ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> And so I'm just coming around. I wouldn't recommend doing this. Like, I'm, don't let me tell you how to live your life, but um, I would not recommend doing this with um, like a 20 gauge wire or an 18 gauge wire, um, just because you're going to have a hard time just getting it to thread through and behave for you. Now, it was fitting so well. I don't know why all of a sudden it's decided not to. But as we get more and more of this, and for those of y'all who are experienced wire wrappers, um, yeah, this is a pretty long and drawn out video, but if this is your first wire wrapping project, I don't want to skip a thing. And it's pretty cumbersome here at first, trying to, like, trying to refine the end of my wire every time. Oops, see that one? Trying to be a kink. And just work it out with your fingers. There we go. So now I've actually started holding on to my wire tip. Or trying to. Um... That way I don't have to re-hunt it down every time. But yeah, just threading right through. It actually keeps getting tangled, the wire does, on my skirt. So you can see how that's starting to come around. So we already threaded through that one, so now we're going to thread through those two. Just like that. Oh, and all these little loops just trying to become kinks. It's like, nope, won't let you. Oh, I've made a, just a knotted mess of things. Okay, so again, this is why I do the long spelled out tutorials so that you can see that even with all the years of wire wrapping I have behind me and hopefully ahead of me, I still get tangled up. But whenever that happens, just pause, figure out what's going on, and then kind of unravel it. There's no sense in hurrying through and damaging your wire or messing up your piece or, you know, anything like that. Okay. And for me, it is a goal to always come through both rings, front and back. And I also want to show you guys how to do a super cute little edging today, too. which I just literally just decided that I was going to do. So, um, though, honestly, it's going to have a lot to do with um, whether or not we have any wire left over. And I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd be having as much trouble um, if I weren't forcing myself to do this all in one spot, because normally this arm is flailing around everywhere. You know, that way I can get my full arm span to pull the wire through. But I'm trying to train myself to stay on camera. <laughs> Which, if you keep up with some of my older videos, I think I'm doing a pretty decent job at comparatively. <laughs> okay, so we threaded through that one. So now we come through the orange and the red. And I really love doing this wrap on um, round stones, but it, it also looks really cool on um, like square and rectangular uh, triangle shaped stones look really cool wrapped like this. So, I mean, just because I'm doing it one way, don't feel like that's the only way to do it. Take these techniques and apply them to you know, anything you can think of, especially if you're just using enameled copper. Um which is pretty affordable. Uh, there's no sense in, I, there's no such thing as wasted wire if you learned something from it. The only wasted wire is wire left on the spool. 
unused collecting dust. <laughs> Unless it's sterling. Hoard that stuff. Because <laughs> the prices fluctuate so much on that. So yeah, just kind of just stitching it through. Now also, I plan on doing another video showing how to do this wrapping technique um, using leather. For those of us with metal allergies. Because, like, I can wear aluminum and enameled copper just fine. Um, but I know that there are some folks that just don't like the feel of metal on their skin. Or it still irritates them. You know, so it's... I like to give you all different options. That and leather just looks cool. And it can be done with um, synthetic leather leathers as well. Just threading through right there. I am resisting using my nylon draw pliers to even out the kinks and stuff because I don't want to work hard in this any more than, um, than what is necessary. Um, and work hardening is, this was dead soft wire when I started. Um, so it was very malleable and easy to control and manipulate. And so, but now the more I'm running it through my fingers and it's experiencing some bending, it's becoming stiffer. Um, it's probably not obvious to, um, the camera, but just working with it with my hands, it is definitely becoming stiffer. So you can kind of see how it's coming along. I really like that repetition. The thing with this is the more you do it, the prettier it gets. Just having that full repetition all the way around. And I think it really accentuates the um, the diamond cut of this glass too. Which, huge shout out to my friend Jim for sending me this. It's beautiful. I'm going to put it in my window of sun catchers. <laughs> so we have a big um, 12 foot wide uh, eastern facing window and I like to uh, wake up to rainbows in my craft room if I can that was something that ever since I was a kid there was a certain time of day when I was um, oh gosh younger than 10 older than 5 um, we lived in a house up in northern Ohio and uh, where the fish tank was, a certain time in the afternoon, it would put a rainbow on the wall. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. So, like, ever since then, <laughs> I've been like, I want rainbows <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Which is just, I don't know, just a little touch of magic just for that, that time of the day. Um, I get to enjoy watching the rainbows. Speaking of rainbows, I saw one just the other day. I tried to run and get a picture of it, but um, by the time I went back in to get the camera, the rainbow had gone. But I was going to try to get a picture of it for Randy. He was going to the bathroom, so he couldn't just run out and see it. <laughs> there we go. Do y'all remember the double rainbow song? <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of that just now. Because there was actually a time when we lived in Tennessee that I saw a double rainbow. Um, you know, over the cow pasture out behind the backyard. Um, and it was like the, someone took this uh, video of a guy who was like really just tripping out over seeing. And honestly, it was beautiful. I know that it's hard to capture that on a camera, but even with the shaky cam, like, cell phone camera that he was using, it was an astounding sight. I probably would have been freaking out, too. Um, but he was like, double rainbow, oh my god, so intense. And it's just like, um, someone auto-tuned it. And it was like, double rainbow all the way across the sky. Bow, bow, da, da, da. So intense. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know. <laughs> um it changed my life like y'all should go watch it it's a really funny video okay and so now we're coming to a little bit beyond the halfway point see Boop. halfway 
and it's getting a little easier to wrestle with the wire, even though it is work hardening. Eh, after Once you get like two thirds of it done, it stops falling off of the stone. So that's like what I'm looking forward to right now is um, this just staying on the stone. Oops. See, if I had pulled too much harder, that would have become a kink. But we can just take it and untwist it out. And I try to avoid those happening as much as possible, but it still happens sometimes. But yeah, oh, <laughs> jumbled mess. Okay. How do I even... There we go. So yeah, just be patient with yourself. Be patient with the wire. You've got this. There we go. But see how there's that little... Mm, I'm not too pleased with how that wire's laying there. So now that we've threaded it through, I'm actually going to take it and I'm just using my fingernail to push on the wire from a couple of different directions. So it work hardens it a whole lot, but it got that kink out of it and now it lays correctly. I also have this little hook on my, on my well, I call it my sewing desk, but I haven't used this desk for sewing in years. Um, it's just that's what it started out as, is it, it is a sewing machine cabinet desk. Um, but there's a, a little C hook that I had attached to it for whenever I tie macrame. Um, it gives me something to just put the little loop over, um, but it keeps snagging the wire. What's up, puppy? Come here, baby. Oh, Sam dog. It's hard being a dog, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You never get any sympathy. <laughs> Randy went to go get the oil changed in the van, so the dogs are very distraught that uh, their dad isn't here. I know. <laughs> it's okay. He'll be back. Yeah. He's a good boy. Yes, you are. Sorry, doggy snuggle break. <laughs> because the video is not long enough already. <laughs> snuggle breaks are important, though. But just hooking through. Ah, uh, says the same dog. I'm pretty pleased with that. I'd like to do one. I need to order more para wire and get um, some of the different rainbow colors of enameled copper that they have because I had wanted to do on this one um, where I, I used different colors of the wrapping wire to match the rainbow around the edge. Um, but I didn't have all the colors that I needed and they weren't all the same gauge and so I was like, ah, you know. I might do that in a future video. If this one, if y'all enjoy this one and would like to see that, let me know. It is lonely in the house without Randy here. Oh no, did I thread? Yep, I threaded through the same one twice. So to backtrack, we just pull out from where we just came from. There we go. And then we pull out from where we just came from. And then we're going to reinsert. There we go. Let's try that again. So there's that. And I do appreciate y'all who are watching this and just kind of hanging out with me. I know that this is kind of slow and repetitive, but I feel like this way we can make it together. Um, and like here, as I start getting lazy, I start messing up. You want to make sure that, see how this one just came through underneath that wire? that is incorrect like that's well if you're going to do that i'd say just be consistent about it but i try to come in on top of the wire and 
and I want to keep it sitting forward enough on the stone. There we go. Because I don't know if you're noticing, but it was starting to kind of slip back a little bit. And that, I guess that is something that we could do, but I like it sitting kind of quite forward. Yay! The, the wire finally reached a point where um, it's easily manageable now. So weaving should start going much faster for me. Ah, except for that I tangled around my camera. Excuse me. <laughs> and we've also reached, it seems, the point where we no longer have to worry about the bezel slipping off of the stone. This is a weave, though, that I pretty frequently will use with um, setting dragon eyes. Uh-oh, almost got a kink there. Okay, and it sounds like Randy's home. So prepare yourselves for dogs barking. Yeah! They love their papa. <laughs> Hush, guys. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> no, Randy says they freak out when I'm not home, too. They're like, why are you guys not gone together? Okay, so now we're coming back through our first... That we had threaded through and I'm really glad I did a full arm span because I don't know actually if I'm gonna have enough to um, stitch around the edges and so we're just gonna keep pulling oops through here and I'm gonna stitch through right there And I'm going to stitch through. But yeah, you can see this is going by much faster now that our wire is not nearly as long. And you could have, we could have cut our wire much shorter and spliced it in. But I really prefer um, to not have to do that. So. Okay. So now we're getting up to, to where you can see this one was my first one getting threaded back through. So yeah, here we go. Back through this one. Because I do like to repeat my first stitch by going over it with my last. And there we are. That's the fractal wrap on a faceted, it's almost kaleidoscopy, like I really love these things. Okay, so now we get to focus on finishing up the back. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just taking this and squishing it with my fingers to get it to hug very nicely to the stone. And I want this to hold true and snug on the front and not be flopping around like that. Hey, good looking coming in here with food <laughs> so I'm actually going to come through this top ring oh my stomach rumbled <laughs> okay and you can see here I'm just kind of doing a couple of uh, in sewing, I guess this would be a whip stitch, but I'm just wrapping around that ring, being very careful to stack the coils right next to each other. And I think I'm going to do like two more on this side. Or just one. I think that's fine. And I'm going to snip it. 
And then I'm going to get in there with some petite bent nose pliers. And I'm just smushing this down. Cinching it, kind of twisting around, making sure that there's no pokey snaggle bits. And now for this one, the first wire, I'm going to do the same thing. Just a few repetitions around this ring. And I'm kind of just picking a random ring. Sorry if I'm yelling in your ear. I just realized the camera's right in, like, I use my cell phone to record on. Um, and so it's, like, directly in front of my face. So, sorry. I don't mean to be yelling. Okay. And there we go. And so that's tucked in. And so now what we could do from here um, <clears throat> is we can totally... I'm just going to steal a ring from this bracelet. Um, Randy's squeaky chair. <laughs> he was doing so good being so quiet, too. <laughs> There's something sticky on my pliers. Um, I'm going to take a jump ring, and I'm just going to hook through... Two of the rings on the edge and then you can close it and then you could attach a chain to it if you wanted you could just put another large ring on it you could continue the design with more um, wire wrapped bits and baubles that are we make it all nice and pretty and stuff um, you know, just however you like. I actually, I'm going to add another ring to it because I really prefer a much more beefed up looking um, chainmail bezel. Like, I, I don't know, one ring to me just looks flimsy, whereas two rings, and I'll show you real quick what we're going to do. So you've got this one here, and then I'm going to come the next hole over and just hook through right there, and then I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to, I'm just robbing rings from this bracelet. Um, and then I would take two, a ring and hook through like that. So see how those two rings sitting kind of, I don't know. I feel like it makes it look more balanced and centered. So this was how to make a wire wrapped chain mail sun catcher window thingy. Um, <laughs> so if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Um, I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. Um, if you have tutorials that you'd like to request, um, shoot me a comment down below. I'd love, you know, to hear your, your, your requests and hopefully, you know, be able to uh, fulfill them. Now also, here I have a porcupine quill. I'm just going to come in on these wires. And it's something I decided to do just now. Um, but you can take it and kind of just hooking individual wires and pulling them forward. So it's like... Maybe not every single one, but some of them. I think that makes for a pretty cute little edging. And I like using a porcupine quill for stuff like this because I feel like it's a lot less likely to mar up my wire or to scratch my stone. I have no idea what that noise is outside. Um, but I also don't want to break my quill. So, derp, there we go. Okay. So see the little pattern that that gave? Ooh, I like it. Okay, um, so again, yeah, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, there's links to all the stuff down below. Uh, you know, YouTube, Facebook, um, Instagram, Patreon. Yeah, that's if you enjoy my free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in my monthly craft crates. Check me out on Patreon. Links down in the video description below, as well as hopefully a little thing popping up on the screen um, that will take you to a video that talks in much greater detail about um, 
you know, how to become a patron and the different reward tiers and things that we offer over there. So I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks for hanging out with me, y'all. Bye.